in this video, we are going to make a 204 again. So it will look like this. Like this. So we'll be needing to create four sprites. One of them is a grid, which will just be an empty sprite. One of them is a number sprite, which will contain all the numbers from 2 to 2048. One of them is the you win sprite, and then there's a you lose sprite. And we'll be also needing a stick. So for the variables, we'll need a variable change, two variables ij, a variable loss, a new, a variable new, and a variable swap square. And there'll be also a list called values. So for the code, let's start off with the code for the backdrop. So initially, it will remove the values and it will set the new, which will be where it will generate a tool to pick random 1 to 16 and repeat 16 times, it will add 0 to values. And to make it an empty grid. After that, it will replace uh, the item new, which is the item where we put a tool with the tool and it will broadcast display. We will have to create a message. And there'll be four messages, cat, display, lose, and win. Then when up arrow key is pressed, we'll set J to five, set K to zero, which indicates that the grid has not been changed. And repeat 12 times, we'll set at I to J. So then basically we'll be moving each square up. Uh, uh, we'll be moving each square up, which means decreasing its index by four. And we'll repeat it until it's in the top row, or we cannot. Mm. Or, mm. or the current square is empty because if it's empty, we don't have to do anything. Or if, or if the uh, square above is uh, not empty and it's not the same. So we'll be setting change to one, which means that the grid has already been changed. And we'll set I item swap square of values to zero. No, no, oops. So if item swap square of values is zero, which means that the square above is empty, then we'll just swap the two values. Otherwise, if they're the same, then we'll double the uh, uh, we'll double the number above and replace the number below with an empty square. And after that, we'll change i by minus four, which indicates doing it again with the square above and repeating it. And we'll set the swap square to i minus four again. After that, we'll set j to 1, the change j by 1. So this will iterate through all of the, uh, these squares. So the same goes for down arrow, we set j to 12, set change to 0. And this time, we set sort square to i plus 4. And our condition this time is 12 is smaller than i, 12 is smaller than i, or blah, 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 blah. And we'll set change to 1, and this is as usual. And after that, we'll set i to 16 because we do not, uh, because this indicates that we do not want to continue moving up the square further. So we'll set i to 16, which will cause the program to terminate because of this condition. Similarly, when the right arrow is pressed, we set the swap square to the one to the right, which is i plus one, and we'll repeat until i mod four equals zero. The, the idea is uh, we need to set j to 15 initially. So the idea is that i mod 4 equals 0 means these four squares. And we cannot move the square further right from these four squares. And now note that this time we have a different code for changing j. We change j by minus 4. And if it's smaller than 1, we change it by 15. So this will allow the program to iterate through all of these squares. This, 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 and this, this, this. Now, if left arrow is pressed, then we do something similar. We set the square swap to i minus 1, and this time i mod 4 is 1. And we'll be setting i to 2 because after that, when we change i by minus 1, it'll become 1. And when i is 1, this will cause this program to terminate. So. So, for example, if there, there's a 2 and a 2, then it will just terminate and it will not continue. And over here, we have to set i to minus 1 for the right arrow. 
for similar reasons. And after that, we'll, we'll be broadcasting check after NHK is pressed. So firstly, if change is one, then that means that there's a change. Because if there's no change there, uh, then we will not need to continue the program. We will, need, uh, we will not need to add an additional tool. If you have tried playing 2048, you'll realize that. So we'll set a new to pick random 0 to 16, 1 to 16, and we'll repeat it until this item is empty so that we don't end up replacing a field square like this one with a zero. After that, we'll replace item new of the values with a two. And if the values contains two zero four eight, then that means that the player won. So we'll broadcast win. Otherwise, if the values uh, does not contain zero, which means that it's full, then we'll have to check. So we'll have been and checking if there are any two adjacent squares because if not, then that uh, with the same number. Because if not, then we cannot move anymore and we lose. So we set loss to one and we set i to one and we iterate to check if any two squares horizontally adjacent squares have equal numbers. In that case, we'll set lo a loss to zero, as you can see. And we'll do that again. This time we'll do it vertically. So we'll do it column by column. We'll do this column first. So first we set i to one. Then we, uh, we compare the square one and square five, which are these two squares. Then we compare square five with square nine, square nine with thir square 13. And now i will be 13, so we change it by negative 11 and start considering this column. After that, if if loss is equal to one, which means that the player indeed lost, then we'll broadcast lose. After that, we'll be broadcasting this play. Let's go to the grid. So this is slightly easier. We'll set the pen color to black because we want a black grid. And so define a square, we'll just draw a square. And this is a code for creating a row, which you can pause. So basically it'll draw a square and move to the right and repeat. And this is the code for drawing a grid. So it'll draw a, a, an entire row, move down and repeat. Here's a code for the number. Make sure that the costumes are in order, the costume from 2 to 2048. And so when I receive display, it'll delete the code. So, and after that, it'll regenerate the clothes. So when I receive display, we'll set i to 1 and repeat 16 times. If it's greater than 0, which means that the square is not empty, then it'll go, uh, go to this set of coordinates, which is basically the a position of the corresponding square that we have to go to. So for example, to draw this square over here, it'll go to somewhere over here, minus 112.5 and 87.5. After that, it'll switch costume to this form formula. So basically this formula will find out well, how much, what power you have to raise to, to in order to get the value because Mm, if we say switch costume to costume one, then it will switch to this costume, for example. And it will create a clone. After that, it will change the other one. Make sure that this part is hidden because we do not want things like this to happen. And also remember that uh, the, uh, the clones have to show. Then we'll create a uh, spread with the U win. And so it's going to hide because we don't want the uh, something like the user winning at the very start. And when the user receives that they have won, they'll set the ghost effect to 100 and it'll show. After that, it'll slowly uh, appear. So for example, if I were to click on this, then you can see what happens. Then it'll stop all. Similarly, if, uh, the same thing happens for the you lose, right? So it'll set ghost effect to 100. Show and repeat 25 times, it'll change ghost effect by negative 4. 
We have come to the end of the video. Before you leave, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.